Let me ask you guys this. It's just the best weather of training camp you guys have ever seen. Yeah. I want James Eels. And this is my 25th training camp. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Would you rather uh, have some dog days? No. Me, individually? No. For, for the team? For the um, yeah, I mean, sometimes that you know, just stresses them a little bit in a good way. But um, um, to me, um, you know, when you get overheated like that, sometimes injuries become you know, into play. So I'm kind of I'm glad where we're, that we've had what we've had. How'd you work it out with the weather gods? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I do that, I'd be wouldn't be here. Brian, you gonna look at Travis for more than a week this time, or? You know, yeah. Obviously, he he knows our system a little bit, and then he was in Denver, and so like um, obviously going into these last two preseason games, we needed some numbers, and so we were um, having a guy like him available to us who actually knows um, a lot of what we're doing is was uh, was nice. At cornerback, what do you think of the depth you have there? Obviously, your, your front three are as good as it gets, but with Shamara and et cetera, what do, you, what do you think you might have there? Yeah, I think those guys have done a nice job so far. Um, I think um, this between the San Francisco game and then these two practices and then um, tomorrow night's game, I think it's a, it's a pretty good window of, of evaluation and competition. So they've done a nice job. Um, certainly, Sherm has grown a lot, uh, which is nice to see. Got a couple of new guys in there that I think are feeling their way around here, but um, yeah, I like them. They're they're all a little shorter than what I'm used to, but uh, but I like their aggressiveness and the way they play. Yeah, you know, last year you had a revolving door guys at that position coming in basically every week. You tried someone new, but you've stuck with this group basically. Is, is that a sign that you like what you might have there? I do like I do like what I what we have there. I think uh, not only on defense, but I think they all provide some you know uh, an impact on special teams. So. Um, again, you guys know we're always going to be kind of churning in a little bit, um, but I like what they've done so far, and I think it can help us. Trying to go like 55 or OQ has jumped mm-hmm. out the last few days of practice. At what point do you have a feel for if you can do that right away as a, you know, in real games? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, he's had a, a bunch of nice days here over the past week. Uh, I think you got to keep stacking those good days, and I think as these guys learn to be professionals and play at our level, um, it's all about the consistency, you know, um, not just doing it one day, but being able to do it every day. Um, I think once you start to see that, and we've seen that in the past few days, which is really nice, um, but once you see that um, game to game, practice to practice, and I think you start having um, you, you more um, faith in that they could do that on Sundays every every week. But he's done a nice job. I think he's got a, a bright future. We're excited about him. Along those consistency lines, when you look at Romeo's camp, he probably leads your offense in splash plays and drops. Uh, it's pretty rare for a rookie receiver to come in and contribute right away. How, how far or close is he to being able to do that? Yeah, I think obviously, for a young player, he's had an outstanding first training camp, uh, which is really good to see. I think last time I talked, you know, I think as you go through training camp, and you, you know, as many as I've been through, you see – you know, guys will start out, and then as you get to a certain point, the, the um, physical toll, the mental toll, um, kind of comes into play a little bit, and they usually have a little. There's little dips, and um, so I think a lot of our players, um, not not just the young guys, but even some of the veterans, have had some of that as the training camp has gone on. Um, but again, we're always looking for that cons- consistency, right? And I think that's um, you can make too much of the evaluation process in training camp because a lot of times this is just working to that point, you know. Um, but certainly Romeo has shown enough um, in his a brief time here that we think he can help us. Pretty speaking of evaluation with the Saints being in here, mm-hmm. I know a few years ago there was maybe one critic of uh, joint practices, <laughs> but did you guys tweak last year and this year how you did them to make them more productive? Like I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but with uh, Chuck Pagano's brother being on Houston staff, maybe you guys weren't able to get as much done offensively in his quarterback's opinion. Did you feel like you got as much as you can out of joint practices these two days? I thought it was two really good days of work. You know, I think it probably goes really a lot to not only the two um, uh, teams, but their, their coaching staffs as well, just because I think uh, being prepared and organized as you head into these things, I think is really important and knowing what you want to get out of it. And then being able to adjust kind of in practice and how things are going and, and what, what you need to get out of it. So, um, you know, I thought the atmosphere was great. I mean, having the amount of fans we had out there, I think, is, is really helpful for, for both teams. Um, and then I just think the controlled environment against, um, you know, an, another opponent um, is really, really good for our players. So um, I think we got a lot out of it. Um, and it'll be good to, good to see these guys kind of let it loose on Friday. But I think um, these two days, I, I, I would, we'd love to have more of these if we had the time, you know, because I just think it's, it's really good work. Um, and certainly from an evaluator's perspective, having another group of 90 players out there is always um, not only just evaluating their guys, 
but just kind of stacking them up and see where how you, how you you stack up against them, I think is is a is a nice couple of days for us. With uh, Colby Jones, you signed him after that rookie camp. I guess what did you see during those two days, and how have you seen him progress to a guy who was taking first team reps in that two minute drill the other day? Yeah, he's done a nice job. Um, you know, again, I think uh, he's taking making the most of his opportunities, and that's that's good to see. Um, you know, I think he plays with a pretty good edge to him. And um, again, these guys are learning, and so there's going to be days where the learning part gets them, and then there's other days where it kind of clicks for him. And then he's had a couple of nice days here over the past week. There, there was a camp in 07 where I was kind of surprised that Robert Ferguson was released, and Ted, I think, came out and said, you know, we're going to let this guy give him a chance to catch on with somebody else because mm-hmm. he had James Jones in camp. Are there times that you do that in the middle of a camp? Rather than keep a veteran around another couple of weeks, move on, or do it, you maybe you need the time to do an injury settlement. Are those kinds of considerations take part? Yeah, there's. I think it's case by case. You know, I think certainly if you have a veteran player that you come to a point where you don't think he's going to be, you know, part of you moving forward. I think the right thing to do is, if if they if you think they're going to have an opportunity somewhere else, is to give them that opportunity. Um, most of the time, you, you you know, with injuries and all the different things that come into play when you when you're picking a roster, I think you. You usually don't have that luxury, but if you do, I think it's the right thing to do. Is it too late to find a veteran long snapper? I mean, are you are you too far along to oh. find a veteran long snapper, a guy that's really reliable? I mean, are you looking at just having a rookie? First of all, we're looking at it all, and Tom, you know that. Um, but no, I don't. Do I think it's too late? No, I think um, Jack's done a nice job for us so far. Um, but yeah, I think when we by the time we you know kick off that first Sunday, and as we go through the season, I think certainly. Um, if that's not where we want it to be, then we'll be looking for that. And, there, and there's always guys available. So um, right now we feel pretty good about where we're at. But um, if we can upgrade and, and get better, we will. Brian, you talked about the coaching staff of the Saints yesterday. Dennis Allen said there was going to be a dinner between the Packers and the Saints. How did that go? Did anyone eat cheese curds? I know we were talking about that with them over at the Saints. Uh, we, we did have a, uh, a little get together social uh, last night. We, we've done that in the past with the other staffs and stuff, and it's just uh, I think it's um, I think it helps uh, certainly after these two practices, which is good. Um, but I think it's just um, these guys are up here for four or five days, um, you know. And I think it's obviously a bonding opportunity for them. Um, we don't we we as an organization, I think Matt and, and I would love to do something similar and travel, but because of how important our fans are to us in here, we did, we just don't we really haven't you know left. Um, so I think it's another opportunity. I mean, it's a, the NFL is a very small community, so most of these coaches and scouts know each other. And uh, so it's just, yeah. But um, I think they're getting their fill of Wisconsin. There's no doubt about it. So they didn't get to see the famous the air fridge? No, 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 no. That's, that's, yeah, that's, no. I don't even get to see it that much, so. <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you think of what you've seen from Jordan, not only in the game last Friday, but throughout this offseason? Mm-hmm. You've obviously believed in him, even when there were some times where he struggled. Um, what do you kind of think of where his advancement is and where he needs to go in the coming weeks? Yeah, no, I think I think he's progressing nicely. I think he's taken some you know really significant steps. I think not only in the offense and his confidence in it, um, and his ability to kind of um, I think I talked the last time about as things slow down, seeing things before they happen, which I think is important. Um, you know, so I think he's just got to continue to do that and, and, and start to recognize the different situations in the end game um, and making those decisions, what I think he's doing. And he's letting, I know you guys have seen it too, he's just, I think he's recognizing things faster and letting the ball rip. Um, so again, I, you know, for me in preseason, I want to see him move the ball, I want to see him score, take care of the ball. Um, he did some of those things last week, which I think were very impressive, but um, he's got to continue taking the next step, you know. And, um, but he's, you know, He's, he's really doing some nice things, and um, um, I like the way he's working. What's been your biggest surprise besides the weather for this camp? What surprised you most? Okay. Biggest surprise? That's a tough question. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's really any surprises. You know, I think um, we're pretty still up early. We have two preseason games left. That's probably a better question for after that third preseason game. Um, but there's been, you know, different players. Um, that have done some things that have been nice to see. And there's been uh, d- different position groups maybe that have, have done some things that, that I wasn't expecting. So, um, but yeah, not, no, no real big surprises. Brian, as much, as much as we're hearing and seeing, you know, Jones and Dylan on the, mm-hmm. pract- on the field together offensively, does that influence like 
how many running backs you feel you need to keep on the 53 or because you have you know 16 spots on the practice squad it's still just kind of business as usual yeah i think you know, for me, uh, I know everybody focuses a lot on the 53. It really is more the, the 69, you know, the whole practice squad and, and how that stacks up. Um, as you go through an NFL season, the amount of players you use and the team you're playing with at the end of the season compared to the beginning of the season, is um, it's, it can be drastic. So um, to me, it's just, um, you know, it, it certainly I think you kind of have some minimums at each position that you kind of feel you have to have. But then after that, with a 16-man practice squad, I think you're, you're trying to keep maybe the best 53 overall to start the season. That doesn't mean that's going to be the best 53 game eight, game 12, and into the playoffs. You might spot that. That's how I was going to ask running backs, too. Um, maybe Colin will be back, so this renders this whole question void. But at number three, you've got Patrick Taylor, who's a big, sturdy guy. And you've got Goodson, who's not, but he's really got some juice, I guess. What are you, what are you looking for there? Yeah, I think a lot of it is just, I think, with the two guys that we do have that we're counting on, you know, I think the, the next guy, obviously, there's some special teams that come into play with that. That's going to be an important part of, of that the third running back spot if we decide to keep three. Um, but then I think overall, there's just consistency. Like, if we do have an injury, can they fill one of the roles that those other two guys are, are in right now? So, um, you know, as you guys know, the big jump from college to the National Football League is usually in pass pro for these guys. They just haven't been exposed to a lot of that. Um, and being able to protect our passers first and foremost. So, Matt seemed to absolve Jordan of most of the interceptions. I mean, certainly the third one, maybe the ball didn't need to go there, but the mm -hmm. first two, as a talent evaluator, you know, the quarterback has to play clean. That's usually right. the bottom line, right? So, how, how do you evaluate that when he has some plays that, I mean, literally bounce off another guy's hands? Do, <laughs> yeah. do you absolve that, or do, how do you evaluate that? Yeah. Whenever you evaluate any player, I mean, there's certain things that are in his control and th certain things that aren't, you know? So, I think with a quarterback, first is the decision to throw the ball where he threw it. You know, is that is that the right decision? You know, should he put the ball there? Um, did he make a good throw? And then after that, you know, it's <laughs> it's kind of out of his control. So um, when you're evaluating guys, it's it's uh, you got to be able to evaluate what's in their control, and what's not in their control, and um, you know, certainly, um, and you can uh, everybody can have their opinions on that. But um, I thought overall, you know, Jordan did a nice job with his decision making, uh, with his throws. I'm sure there's some he wants back. Um, but over the whole course of camp, um, between you know, kind of last year, this spring, and now, whoops, excuse me, the the steps are, are are trending in the right direction, which is which is a nice thing to see. Two more. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems pretty remarkable for a 300 plus pound guy to be back from a torn ACL in less than nine months. Yeah. Um, both energetically in the building and also on the field, how does getting out and back kind of yeah. give a jolt? To well, he's such an important part of our team. You know, not only um, his play on the field, but what he what he brings to our locker room, and um, you know, not just him, but having Bobby back and getting Christian out there. I think that those are good first steps. They're really still in in the rehab process, and they're not all the way back. Um, but uh, getting him out there with a helmet, shoulder pads on, I think is a very good first step to see how those things react. And I think when you do that, you know, they start to feel more and more like a football player again, which I think is an important step too for those guys. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're excited to get him out there. I think uh, it's on us to make sure that we don't get him out there too soon because he's a very um, a big part of this franchise and this team. So, um, But um, selfishly, you want to get him out there as fast as you can just because you know what he can do out there. What if, Brian, does bringing guys back like that, uh, does this what you went through with Dave last year and back down the hall, or do you think that was just a one-off situation? Yeah, I think each each guy's situation is different. I mean, there's there are different ages, there's different um, different injuries, um, different rehab processes as well as they go through it. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, with Dave, that that's a unique situation, and um, you know, I think Elton's is more you know kind of standard. But um, at the same time, he's still going through his rehab. He hasn't gotten to the end of it yet. So until for me, until you get those guys out there playing full games and, and seeing them recover for the next game and the next game. Um, you know, you never know, really know where they're at. What are the factors from here to Minnesota to determine whether or not Bobby and, and Elton will be able to play week one? Are they the same for both of them, or are they different? Mm -hmm. what, what are those factors? Yeah, our process for return to play is pretty, pretty similar for all of them, but that doesn't mean they're on the same timeline. You know, so um, as we go through, I think this is going to be this next week heading into Kansas City is going to, you know, a practice is going to be really important for those guys. Um, but with the bye week and stuff, we do, we do have a pretty good set of time before we get there. So. Um, you know, we, uh, we certainly want them back, uh, but at the same time, I think it's on uh, us as an organization to make sure we protect them because it's a long season, and uh, I'd certainly rather have them back, you know, for the whole season than just a few early games.